October 4th. Um, we're meeting here in the John Hogan meeting room. It's the Moortown Select Board. Call a meeting to order. So we'll start with the agenda at 6 o'clock. We've got general public comments. We have two gentlemen in tonight. Or if they would like to start. Guys, I don't know who was here first or if you guys are here for public comment. Sir? Uh, when you say public comment, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, if you would like to make a general public comment, what's your... You're welcome to be here just for, to be here, but is there any I, purpose? I've had a survey done and it's been five years since the town took 20 acres from me and gave it to someone else. I want to know how that happens. How the town took 20 acres from you. Can you um, share a little bit more about this? I, I got my tax bill on... What? Oh, Ira Hatch. Ira Hatch, okay. Uh, I got my tax bill in 17. And I went from 43 acres down to 29. Prior to that, when I bought the property, they said, you, I have, my deed says 50 acres. They said you only have, the realtor said you only have 43 acres. So I, I went to the town here and asked what, what that, where'd my seven acres go? Mm -hmm. uh, they don't, nobody know anything. And so then they took 16 more. Well, then I'm a little excited now because now there's 20 acres and they've given it to my neighbor. And so I go down and I said, you know, what the heck is this? So when you say they, was it the listers that made this change? Was they, that the girl here, uh, Brown, uh, Cheryl Brown, yeah. she says the tax, they made a new tax map and the guy comes and he just makes marks on there and that's and then they go by that and I know that is not true. And that was in 2017 you say? I believe that's right because I have the tax bill of 16 and uh, I had 43 acres at that time. Since I've had the survey done I have 49.7 acres. Uh, but the aggravation and uh, money that it has cost me, I want to know why I had to go through all this. So you had 49.7 acres is what the survey showed. Now, was that survey after this happened? That, after, they, after they took that land, right? Because uh -huh. I came down and I said, what, what's going on? Put it back like it was. And she said, you have to have a survey. I said, well, you didn't have one. And nobody was surveying in the area at the time. There was nothing going on. I want to know how we got to this point. I mean, now, she told me today, well, tomorrow we'll have this resolved, and I'll revise your bill and send it to you. Right, so we have, for tonight, on errors and omissions, um, we have a change. Uh, to, to kind of what you said, we're going from 29 acres of prior 29 acres to 49.7 acres, and that's a new uh, survey that was um, given to the town or uh, here in April. Actually, it should have been done by the listers prior to um, submitting the the list. Right. Um, right. So we will correct that, um, and then what we can do is I can. Uh, we can go back and find out in 2017 why it was changed. I can't tell you tonight, I don't do that stuff, but I'm willing to go back and try to find out for you. I know we were having our tax maps updated. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, I imagine it had something to do with that, but let's ask them, the people who were doing it, well, why was it changed? The, the guy that received the property was running around with a GPS saying that my property was his. Now, 
I don't know, but when the pack people come to make a new map, and they, they, they don't have anything until somebody gives them direction. Right. Now, I want to know who gave them the direction and what was it. All right, well, we'll look into it and find out where the change came from. And we'll, uh, yeah, I feel that I'm out five years. I mean, I can't sell my property. I can't, uh, there's all kinds of things that I can't do with it when it's not correct. And that I know it's not correct. And now you know it's not correct. So I, I'd like to get to the bottom of it. It cost me a lot of money. It's cost me tremendous aggravation and, and uh, so on. Well, as I mentioned, we will look at... Uh, and we'll contact the people who were working on the taps, tax maps and uh, find out why it was changed. There were a number of peop, uh, parcels changed in town for, for various reasons, but we'll uh, find out and get an explanation for you. Yeah? Okay. So you're going to go ahead with this, send me a revised bill? Is that yeah, so tonight, after... Um, and I wonder why a revised bill, seeing as how the last five years it was, it was that... And now that I'm better than six months in, in, into it, why should I pay what I should have been paying right along when they're not giving it back to me until today? Well, we're, we're, we're doing the best we can with the changes that we had. You brought the map in. We're doing that for you. So you're being credited with more acreage. So yes, yes, you do have to pay for it. Yeah, but uh, who's been paying for it up until now? Uh, probably where wherever it had been. <laughs> right, and that's what, that's the other thing that uh, Cheryl Brown said. Well, don't worry about it. Just let them pay the taxes. I, I'm, I'm guessing that that. Ain't well, I just when those went out, when all the new tax maps went out, um, you were given a uh, a letter talking about the changes, and there was opportunity to come in and greet those I changes. Well, um, they're, they're sent out, so um, you may or may not have got it, or you may have taken it for another piece of junk mail, uh, which often people do. But there was an opportunity for you, certainly in the last five years uh, since that change, to come in every year and grieve that. Every year when I come in, when I pay what they tell me that I owe now, I always say, this is no, I'm not saying that you guys are correct by paying this bill. I'm only paying the bill so that I don't get sure. uh, penalized for not paying my taxes. Yep. Well, that point is when you should have been instructed or, or um, made a grievance at that point. Uh, as soon as you learned that you didn't, the, the acreage wasn't correct, would be the best time. Would well, have that's been. What I did come. As a matter of fact, did you file any were papers? A meeting here. The, when I came to a meeting, and it was about three appraisals, and they, they said, "What's your problem?" And so I told them what my problem was. I said, "Well, we don't have anything to do with that." I, I feel that they do have something to do with it. That somebody, that, and as a matter of fact, the woman that was a lister, she had uh, stood up and I was standing there, and she said, if you've got trouble with your neighbors, why don't you take it up with your neighbors? Now, i got to say, when you take my property and you give it to somebody else, I think she should have been concerned. Uh, uh, with that, that she would have tried herself, but instead she just blows me off, you know. I, 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 I'm flabbergasted at the way things have been handled. Well, I, I'm sorry, uh, and as I said, we were, were looking to uh, make an, a correction tonight, and then we can look into uh, when the tax maps were updated, why uh, yours was changed. Okay. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, and when do I find that out? Well, it's, we'll start that process tomorrow. It shouldn't be uh, too long, uh, you know, within a couple of weeks. Yeah, okay. So you're going to send me a revised bill and... Yes, we will. We'll make sure that's out within the next couple of days. Back uh, on the tax map. 
Say again. I'm going to have my acreage back on the tax map. Yes, you will. To 49.7 acres. Okay. And you did what was everything that you did was correct in having it resurveyed and so on. So that was good. It was good that you did that. Right. Well, I, I had, had no choice. Uh, what else can I do? Right. So I was forced into that situation. I, I really feel bad about the way it all went down. I, yeah. Well, we, we, we feel badly for everybody who did have issues. You know, with it. Um, and uh, as Tom said, we'll definitely correct the Well, as we did to the others. I, I believe myself that the neighbor did all of this. That he, that somebody in here allowed him to talk to the tax people and then they did what he said. He never had to do a survey. He collected my property. He never did a survey. He said he wasn't going to do one. And they told me that he owned my land. I mean, I, I did do the right thing because the way that I wanted to handle it was not the way I have to handle it. I can tell you that. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you've handled it this way. That was uh, well done. And thank you for bringing the, the survey. And we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll look into it and try to figure out right. uh, what happened there, Mr. Hatch. Thank you. May, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. What's your name? Stephen Hatch. My brother. Yep. Uh, I used to be in the zoning industry in Boston, so I'm fairly familiar with what's going on. You do not change a tax map, period. You don't change tax maps unless you've got surveys to go with them. Otherwise, you don't change again tax maps. You can't get a guy in there and just draw pictures on your map and say that's the tax map, because it's not. That's not the way to do it. Well, we had the tax maps updated. Um, uh, by an outside firm, and there was this, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. That's, uh, I don't know the exact, uh, all the changes and, and how they made changes, but I know they spent a couple of years doing it, uh, and it's something that's done uh, in every town. So it does it does happen. Up, uh, tax maps are updated. Well, not to the extent that it happened here. Well, it was incredible how many people lost land or gained land. All right, well, I'm not going to debate that with you tonight. Is there any other uh, comments you have? No, it's not. Thank you. Travis, what do you got for us? I have uh, two things. Be um, very brief. Um, yeah. Yeah. You notice the planning commission hasn't posted any minutes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. The planning commission hasn't posted any minutes since July 2000, I mean, 2001 21. So this July. Uh, there hasn't been any minutes posted from that point on. All right. Such so, so you don't what well, they've had for meetings, have there? I can check into it and certainly get that fixed. All right. And I have another concern to do with uh, yesterday there was two dirt bikes harassing on Moortown Mountain Road uh, with an ATV and a white Toyota pickup truck following them. They're also down here in the town, yeah. riding on the sidewalks. By my house, too. Yep. And, uh, I'm, Did you call the police, Travis? Well, that's also what I'm here to say, is uh, I hope anybody in the community will also call the middle, Middlesex Barracks, and uh, if you have any other information, please, uh, please let the Middlesex Barracks know about any event that did happen. I almost hit them head on, and they're on my side of the road, meaning I was going one way. Right. Now you said they were harassing, what do you mean by that? I... Uh, they were going extremely fast on Moortown Mountain Road on the opposite side of the road, and then turning around, coming back, and then turning around again, going back. Just in front of your place, or is no, no, just all the whole entire road. And they stopped down here. To, uh, I had somebody that saw them down here at um, the Moortown store. Oh, and then yeah. they rode down the sidewalks down here that they also saw. Did, and no one got any plate numbers or anything like that. There's no yeah. plates on ATVs. I know. Okay, I didn't I know. know. That's I right. know. There's a lot of them. I just. All right. What I'm the dirt bike. 
in, like sort of with him, it definitely seemed like, but I can't say that for sure. Did they go all the way up to the Boytown Gap type of thing? All the way up to the way down the Berlin line, all the way over to here. Because so. I, I saw the tracks. Uh, yeah, those tracks right at the, the corner of uh, Howes Road and, and my road. <clears throat> Yeah, I would, uh, you know, again, we're not a police agency no, here, no, but, and I, but I appreciate you coming forward and just call the, the state police as soon as you, you know, email them. Like the lieutenant says over there, the more you call them, the, the, well, the more I have to get uh, someone to come in. Another incident where ATVs allowed on the roads may not be the appropriate thing to do, but that's just a call. So. Yep, no, that's, that's a... Yep, that's it. Is that it, Travis? All right. Miss, did you have a comment? I'm not. I'm, I'm on my letter. And, okay, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, go ahead and move on to our agenda items here. And if there's no more, let me just make sure. I'm going to check to make sure we don't have. There's someone actually trying to get in here. All right, so when. If I have this up and people see that there's someone in the waiting room up here, someone say, hey, Tom, there's someone in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I will leave that open because I don't look down enough. And uh... So, Dylan. Hi, Dylan. How are you? I just want to see if he's here for public comment. He's muted. Uh, Mr. Frazier. Oh, I'm sorry. My, I, my wrong name. That's my husband. <laughs> That's okay, Ms. Frazier. Then I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, so I'm just going to turn the volume down here. Uh, just, are you here for um, general public comments? Uh, no, I worked with the reporter and uh, to, to listen. Oh, okay, that's fine. Just uh, wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions. All right, and you can uh, hear and see okay? Yes, right. thank you. Very good. Thanks, and I uh, will hope you well. Bye-bye. Or not bye, but I'm just going to mute everyone. All right. Very good. So we'll go ahead and move on um, to errors and omissions. And tonight we have three. So I'll go over them, kind of explain them real quick, and then let's take a vote on them. Um, the first one is uh, Barbara Cohn, K O H N. Um, there was a correction, a change from 433,600. Uh, it's decreasing by 18,300 to 415,300, and corrected per survey on the map. Uh, slide 39 from 166 acres to 139 acres. So that's our first correction. The second correction uh, would be Calvin Lee Ward in Sharon Town, uh, a change from 491,500 to 513,200, uh, difference of $21,700 um, increase. Uh, and there was a change from uh, 2 to 3.2 acres, uh, and that was on slide 9D. Um, okay, Mr. Hatch was in earlier tonight. Uh, his change from 182.100 to $203,800, a change of $21,700 uh, increase. And as we discussed earlier, that was uh, corrected per a survey. Uh, from 29 acres to 49.7 acres. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve those. Second. Kelly seconds. Any further discussion on the uh, errors and omissions? If not, uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. All right, Sasha, so if we can make sure those corrected bills get out so uh, as soon as possible, that would be nice. Thank you. And um, Emily, why don't you roll up as close as you feel comfortable. And 
Williams, you I know you had some budget or a budget question, and I think yeah. it was on the heating that you were. Exactly. Um, so um, I'm sure even guys personally are aware that the heating has costs have gone up. Um, so that's the one area of the library budget that we are most concerned about is that um, we are over from this year, and so we're planning for next year. And um, when we were looking at that and talking to Sherilyn about it as well, noticing that the, there are two line items for heating the town hall, one being from the library budget and the other in the town hall budget. So we were wondering if it made sense just to combine those into one line item for heating the town hall. Um, and then going from there, looking at how much more to add in to actually cover the cost of heating. Did you have, um, I, I think it's probably a good idea, did you have a, an idea of what you were looking at or thinking of? Um, so the current, I have this, if this helps to see the numbers. Um, I think, yeah, I probably have it in front of me here. Okay. That the numbers combined between the two is uh, 2,500 but that according to this year's cost of heating won't cover it for next year's if costs continue to be the same. So I was thinking just 3,500, but All right. that's the goal. Why don't, I, I think you have a good idea there. Why don't we, uh, first we'll try to figure out based on what um, uh, our contract is with Gillespie's to how much we're going to pay and how much right. is going up, and then we can figure out an equitable split between the two and figure okay. it out. It really doesn't, to me, I don't really care. It's coming from the same pocket. Exactly. You know, we just, whether we want to, what I would like to, is just have it accurate so we know if you're spending 50% of the time in there, you know, we allocate 50% of the, the heating to that, or if it's, just so we have an idea in case things down the road, we're thinking, well, what does it cost for, the, for us to heat with just the library or things like that? So more to figure out to get it as accurate as we can to, you know, the building's open and using how much does it cost so we can forecast our budgets in the future, but, and then we can, so we can do with that and then we'll, we'll work with you on that and just figure out, you know what it is, and then try to the best uh, algorithm to to get it accurate for who's. For the next budget. Yep. yep. Okay. That's really all. Is that it? How's everything else with the library stuff going as um, far as your? Well, everything's going really well. Um, but we did lose our assistant librarian. She has moved on to a new career, um, and that's the other sticking points to be able to fill that position. It's especially in the job market right now. Um, finding anyone to, to fill that. So that's where the only other kind of struggle we have right now. Yeah, I think that's, you're feeling the pain of what everyone is feeling. Everyone's feeling that, but, exactly. Um, um, I don't know, does any of the libraries around have anyone that's working part time that might be willing, you know, maybe the Lakesfield Library and share some talent like that? Yeah, I don't know. That might be an idea to, to you know, we've got, um, and even reach out as far as Montpelier, uh, you know, you never know, you might have someone that's, let's say, hell, I'll go there for 20 hours a week, you know, I'm doing it here, mm -hmm. and just put it out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing yeah. ventured, nothing gained. Or even as far as Aldrich and Barry, because that's not yeah. bad. Yeah, just in this yeah. little Washington. In that area. Just um, and it would it would be nice. It would be nice to get someone with a little experience and mm -hmm. change some ideas of things that we guys are doing. Yeah, because you're doing some really good things over there. Yeah, but yeah, everything else is going great, considering yeah. <laughs> the, the situation we all find ourselves in. Yeah, it's good. Well, good. Thank you uh, for coming, Emily. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks Emily. Right. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, our next. Agenda item is opening bids for the Fletcher Road Bridge, in which you've received none. Um, um, Winters said, said that the RFP wasn't detailed enough and they didn't want to go by the inspection. So I don't know if that has any impact on it. And then here, construction is just too busy right now. 
than what they were. And law and Cody just didn't answer or show up. So. Um, usually Law and Cody. Yeah, maybe they're slammed. All right, well, we'll have to have maybe Ray take a look at it. I know he had worked on that RFP before, mm -hmm. but it was right at the end. I know Martin had kind of punted with it to him, and um, so maybe we should relook at it, and it needs to be a little more detailed, obviously. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like uh, the scope of work wasn't clearly defined. Yeah. So, uh, um, perhaps the second time we have more detail, they'll bid again. Yeah. <coughs> no, I think, and we can reach out to Blow and Cody again and find out what the problem is there. They, yeah. they, in fact, they just did a project <coughs> for us. The actually over near Travis's place, they were doing that bridge over there. What was that? Hops. Hops Road. So maybe it would be a spring. About a spring, you know, that we could put the spring or summer or something. Yeah. Right now we're kind of busy, but if they knew it was. Does that? Um, Grant, did it have to be done? It didn't have to be done this year, did it? I don't know. I'll have to ask. Yeah, I don't believe. I think that one we had a couple of years on, so I think we're okay there. Um, but we were just based on the, the condition of the bridge. We want to get it as done as soon as possible. But mm -hmm. I think for time-wise, we can we can probably do that. Um, well, we have the next thing up is Chuck with CD Fiber. That's at 6:45. So we've got. 15 minutes before he gets here. Um, why don't we go move down to reports, communications. <coughs> Sasha, what do you have for us in reports? Um, there is a report um, curb cuts in there in that folder for approval. Um, also, want to make sure that the errors and omissions gets. The PTO is asking about trick or treating. Does anybody have any input on that? They were kind of leaning towards not trick or treating this year. You guys have any input? Trick or treating? Yeah. I would say no, unfortunately. <clears throat> On my side of things, I would say yes. I don't. I, <laughs> I would have to agree with you. I think we, <laughs> we can. I think it's you know I, this is a good thing to talk about, yeah. but I mean it's outside. Yeah, outside. Uh, yeah. And I I guess my comments would be is if people were had their station outside, um, then I think uh, there's enough social distancing, and we've asked. Uh, well, I mean, do we have, like, have uh, you know, unvaccinated wear masks or kids wear masks? I mean, you know, whatever the, yeah, I think the recommendations would be to how, how that would fly. Uh, you know. Do we, I mean, does the CDC like have, have any recommendations? School? That would be. Yeah, well, like what they're doing in the school. I mean, the, the kids are wearing masks and they wear masks outside, I believe, too. So they yeah. just do the same thing. Right. Yeah, the same protocol as what the, yeah. that's the governor has to the school, you know, I mean, that's the all the schools are wearing masks. Yeah, I think that would be a, I think you know, we should follow that, right? And that, I mean, it seems to be working here. I mean, there, I don't know, you know, they may, we got to move on with life too, you know, I understand it's, it's a real, it's a, it's a very fine line. Uh, between safety and people's health and, and moving on. So, I mean, I don't want to be cavalier when I say that, or I'm not being. Um, but I think that it's good that we talk about this and try to figure out if we're going to do this, let's do it the best and safest way for for people to do it. Um, and Don, I think your recommendation as far as what are they doing at the school now, that would make sense to me. Um, they're, you know, they've been here during the day and they're parading out with their masks on yeah. and doing things. I think if they were, so Sasha, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to vote on anything, but a consensus, it seems, if people, if they're following the rules of what's going on in the school, we don't, we don't object to it. Is that all right to say? All right, I'll take it back. <laughs> they can go trick or treat. All <laughs> right, Grinch, no. <laughs> same, same rules as they have in school. You want to sign right here? Sure. What's that? Sign right there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
Or it doesn't matter to me. I don't give a shit. To be honest with you. Okay. I'll sign. What were you saying, Don? Did you make it on the call? He said the Grinch, and I said that's a different holiday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what else, Sasha? Um, just want to remind everybody that ballots for the November 2nd vote are available. All right. Um, so are you, we're not sending out any kind of ballots, obviously. Um, We've had a yeah. few calls. For, to send them out. So anyone that wants a ballot, mm -hmm. request them and we will send them out. Yep. Um, anyone here tonight want a ballot? You can take the ballot home, yep. If you want, Travis, you want a ballot, you can get it tonight. Chuck, you can get your ballot tonight. It's for the bond vote. Very important, I think, for people to make sure they're... Do we, do we let people know that I mean, with the posting that the ballots are... Well, I think maybe that might be um, a good thing to put out on front porch forum tomorrow. Yeah. Just let them know if they would like to request a ballot. Uh, we're not sending them out only upon request. I think that's yeah, there. I wonder maybe if Lisa and um, I forget the uh, board. Uh, who's our other board members? Lisa Mason and uh, uh, Kristen. 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 I wonder if they'll maybe know <coughs> As we get a little closer to the vote, maybe they could post something as well and explain to people why it's important to vote or something. Yeah, hopefully they will. We can't. I, I can mention something. Maybe, to Lisa. yeah, if you want to mention yeah. something to Lisa. Yeah, she's a. Yeah, that would be good. And, uh, okay, okay, what else, Sasha? Uh, Robert Turner is going to be meeting with Martin on Thursday and then he's going to come here and meet Sherilyn and I. So hopefully. That engage. All right. Um, I've had a few interactions with Mike Tarrant on the that legal trail that we want to get wrapped up by the end yep. of the year, and I've been pushing him. Okay, that's what legal trail that might be. If I don't mind. <laughs> Watch it. Well, there's no such thing as blood. Well, the legal trail that. Eight seventeen. Yes, thank you. And. I need to have somebody be a designated person for the DocuSign for the Efficiency Vermont, um, what's it called, Tom? How would John be that? Okay. I'll have him email that to you tomorrow so that we can get that going. Okay. <coughs> is anyone, is I, I hope, that? I hope. <laughs> I don't have, I haven't had service today. Uh -oh. All right. So, but, but. <laughs> If he if it comes tomorrow and there's no service, <coughs> Don, do you mind being the DocuSign server? Yeah, or um, uh, sure. I, okay. Yeah, I guess so. It's it's a privilege, so no. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I, no, I, no I'm you kidding. Know, it's fine. I'm excited to see it get done. <laughs> it's all, that's all I'm looking for. I and don't then know. so after I sign it, I can let the electrician know so he can get start yes. to get geared up or do we have to send yes. them out a sign? No, once it's signed, the electrician, it, it's all go. But I mean, I can. I, I read that, but I can send him an email telling him to proceed or come on. As soon as that's done, yes. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I'm allowed to. Yes, you are. Okay. All right, good. Tap, yeah. Give him a tap in the shoulder of that. <laughs> See, he's, he's been anointed to. <laughs> no, I didn't know if it had to come from the chair or something. No, nah, we're all good yeah, with that. Okay. As long as we're all on yeah, the same right. page yeah, or something. Yeah. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> the last thing I have is the. I left it in front of everybody, the Northern Basement Systems. Yep. He finally got back to me. And the big thing to start with is a huge commercial dehumidifier. It's got a filter in it, it's a carbon filter that will take the smell out and it will pull out all the moisture like in the organic material like in the walls and the door to the utility room will have to be a louvered door. That's the only thing that we need to do in addition to that. And Sherman got a response from the historical preservation and we approved it being done. And this ties into the tax I mean, to the present system we have there, is that yes. what I read, to the pump and stuff? Yep. 
that's the first step that he said that he needs help is getting that okay. out. Um, and it would be plumb so that nothing would have to be dumped. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, I don't want to, uh, um, it, it sounds good. I don't know, we talked about last time about having an engineer look at stuff. And so I'm a little skeptical of running in and jumping into something because I think, I mean, this is a problem which I've chased for seven, eight years since I've been on the board. And, and I'm not sure, this may very well be the, um, yeah. the grail that we need, but I want to make sure um, Sherilyn, have we, I mean, Sasha, have we had any other, I know we talked briefly about looking into a, an engineering firm to. No, I haven't. I can. Yeah, maybe we can check in that and see what um, we need to put out for an RFP there to get something to look at. Um, although, I mean, I, like I said, I think this might be something that we end up doing, but I want to make sure it's. Yeah, plus we got a, a bunch of this stuff kind of going at the same time, you know, uh, with the town hall committee and yep. the stuff that we've identified, whether, you know, by town meeting, some of it could be on the table for people to exactly. discuss or vote on, or maybe a phase one, or at least doing some of the stuff that has to be done, you know, like the water mitigation or the spacement project or the accessibility and such, right? You know, anyways, they're going to hand these out in a minute. If yep. Right now. Uh, nope, we'll, uh, we'll wait on that. We'll, uh, Sasha, anything else from, <coughs> from you? That is it. All right, so now we're, we're back on schedule, a little bit behind. Uh, so Chuck, uh, so we'll move on. We're back to uh, C CV Fiber. Chuck, how are you? I'm well, how are you all? Right? We're not doing Good. too bad. It's been a little while since we've seen you. Yeah, I think uh, middle of August was the last time I was in. Yeah. Um, so uh, since then, uh, we have begun the whole inventory phase of our work. Um, you may have seen uh, some of our vehicles out there with our signs on the on the doors. Yeah, yeah. Um, they did the village. Today. Yeah, great. They did the village on Friday, I think, and then Monday, Tuesday, they were headed out Pony Farm Road. Um, and so, you know, we are doing a complete inventory of the town, not just the underserved portions of the town, uh, because that will um, aid in thinking through the overall design of it. Uh, there are going to be times where we have to cross over well-served territory in order to reach other people who are underserved, and, and we do plan to eventually bring service to everyone, although we'll be focusing on the underserved first, of course. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, we also have an RFP out for an operator. The operator will be the subcontractor who actually runs the network. Um, and so we're expecting to announce an operator probably sometime in the next uh, four to six weeks. Um, we've had a number of uh, proposals already come in on that. So when you say that, just give everyone an idea when you say operator. Yeah. Give me an example of an operator. Sure. Uh, well, Weedsfield Champlain Valley Telecom actually acts as an operator for other networks in the state that, that have brand names. So, for example, up in the Northeast Kingdom, they run some network operations up there where it's sold as, I think, NEK Broadband or something, something to that effect. Um, and so basically they're sort of an invisible, silent partner right. uh, you know, behind the scenes, that, but they do all the heavy lifting um, so that we don't have to actually purchase any of the equipment or, uh, or you know, trucks or anything like that. And they already have it in due course of doing their business, so it, it gives them a nice little extra stream of revenue as well. Um, so uh, that is coming up. Uh, another example there is EC Fiber. Their operator is actually called ValleyNet. And so ValleyNet is a behind the scenes company that, that runs the entire EC fiber network. Okay, good, thank you. I just wanted to sure. make sure we what we're talking about. Yep, makes, makes sense. Um, one other uh, interesting tidbit, um, since we last met, the town of Worcester actually did vote <coughs> to uh, uh, send some of their ARPA funds our way somewhere in the ballpark of, I think, 55,000 of their ARPA funds. Um, so we're, we're getting that, which is good. Worcester is one of the towns that's 
quite a bit worse off than the others in our, in our yeah. area. So um, for them, that would be a, a, a big boon, and they saw it as a huge benefit. So. Questions? Um, so the last time you were in, you were talking about a contractor or working with Washington Electric mm -hmm. on something. Now, how, how does that work? I'm trying to figure out if they own the poles, you know, what, how does it work? Yeah, um, so as it turns out, the vast majority of the, the uh, homes and businesses that are underserved in our area are on Washington Electric. Um, and that has to do with partnerships that existed between Green Mountain Power and uh, Waitsfield Champlain Valley Telecom, where, where they were allowed to attach and where they decided to ultimately stop expanding their network. Um, and so WEC, of course, operates in a number of the towns in our district, and um, we decided to partner up um, and basically pursue broadband together. And there are a number of reasons for this. One, um, they felt that we would get access to certain funds that they would not get access to since they are not a broadband provider. Um, that said, they've been around a long time and can get um, uh, debt that we just don't have access to uh, because we are obviously a much riskier endeavor. So they're able to get much lower interest debt options. Um, and so through this partnership, we are working it out such that they're going to actually uh, invest in running the fiber along a lot of their poles and then lease it to us. Um, and we sort of pool our, our access to various different funds together in order to make that happen. All right, so if I send money to you, it's going to them? Some of it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell me about your relationship with Waitsfield Telecom. We've had a long-term relationship with them. They've treated the town very good. So why would I not want to give money to them instead just to expand out their network to service? That's a great question. Uh, to date, they've been unwilling to expand their network into the areas that we are going to go into. Um, and in fact, uh, we are hoping that they'll come in as one of the people in the running to be our operator. We have a great relationship with them. They are, of course, a, a trusted local provider and check off all the boxes of, of what we think would make a great operator for our network, that is TBD though. Um, so the bottom line here to your question is that they're just not willing to extend their direct network to the areas we need to go. All right, because when you, um, and you talked about it earlier, you need to go over some of the, the good to get to the bad. Yep. Um, <clears throat> when you're going through that good, you'll probably take customers there too, right? Yes, and to achieve our mission, we, we will eventually put a directly competitive service up even to the areas that are already good. Um, that will be way, way down the road, um, but yeah, we, we will ultimately become a competitor. Okay. So, so when you say they don't want to extend, Waitsfield doesn't want to extend, you're saying like extend into a Washington electric zone, right. like here in Morgantown, for instance. Yeah, there could be other reasons I'm just unaware yeah. of, but the lines are quite clear when you draw them on the map. Well, so. maybe are they just trying to respect Washington Electric's zone area, and they have their area. Everybody's, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what the reasons. Down their areas is. that they they cover. I'm not sure what the reasons are. And, no, but I mean, and, uh, that's what it's been for so long. Yeah. They each have had their zones. Yep. Right, or if maybe the question if there was you know, an equal amount of money coming from a different source, i.e. us, would they be willing to expand out? To more town. Right. To it's places that are it's worth asking. They are going. Yeah. Uh, it is worth noting our, our pilot program in More Town is moving forward. So um, it would aid in reducing the service costs to the More Town customers who uh, ultimately subscribe. Now, what about consolidated? Now, what is the relationship there? Do you know if they're doing anything? I, I, they are. Uh, everybody is doing something right now because there is a lot of money out there to be had for broadband infrastructure investment. And so uh, they absolutely are doing things. My understanding is they're focusing more around Berlin uh, than they are over here. Um, although I did hear a rumor about a Duxbury, one road in Duxbury that was getting fiber for some strange reason. Uh, I can tell you they're not 
currently investing in Moortown. They could turn around and do it at any time. You know, that well, that is their choice. Berlin does more than more. Yep. Yep. And so how about that? you're saying you're serving these underserved people? So yes. Moortown borders seven different towns, so that means they have a lot of providers than just Wheatfield. Oh, sure. E even in Moortown, we also have a portion of the town that has Comcast. We also have TDS. Yep, now over on the north of that, yes. Because I haven't seen anybody in your crew doing a full inventory just past wash wa uh, Washington Electric where it turns into Green Mountain Power. They haven't been that way. Yep, uh, we are prioritizing the, the Washington Electric lines first, yes. John, do you have any questions? No, I'm just really, really anxious, especially with today. Did you have service today? Uh, I did. I have purchased that uh, Starlink satellite oh. service, and uh, okay. <laughs> it has good days and bad days. But today was a good day. Okay. Um, and I actually, I actually worked. We're doing a home renovation, so I was working down here in the village at a friend's house. <laughs> Kelly, what about you? you? Have any questions? No. I have a question, Chuck. <clears throat> Uh, that was regarding uh, um, this map that you put out. Um, <clears throat> so you list the, the red as underserved, mm -hmm. okay? And I know, like the Herringbrook area, <clears throat> some of these places that are underserved are like deer camps. Off the grid, yep. <laughs> Off the grid. So they'll, they'll never ever, they'll, they'll never ever, you'll never ever serve them. And my question is, if you're counting on those numbers there to help reduce your cost of your system, I can I can pick out six right there. And if this is the case throughout Moortown, are you uh, overestimating the number of people you're going to actually serve, which would drive your initial estimate down? When in reality, if you're only going to serve half that number, your cost is going to go way up. And I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about your numbers yep. based on this map. It's an excellent question, an excellent observation. We have accounted for that. Um, and there is actually a strategy in play to serve them. <coughs> it won't likely be fiber unless they're willing to help foot some of the expense, expense of burying a line, um, which they're probably not. But there's an option called fixed wireless, where basically we go as close to the, the property as we can. We put up an antenna that basically beams it, and then they get a little receiver antenna on their side. Um, and you know it does require power, so they have to have some kind of power option. If they're truly without power, then they're, you know, what's the use of the internet? All right. Hmm. Um, but yes, we, we have accounted for that, and, and our calculations are based on on-grid potential customers. Don, do you have any more questions here? Uh, yeah. I'm just listening. All right, so let, let me just go over, over a couple of things here. So um, I don't like to get on my phone. I'm only getting on here just to, if it was easier to get up the rules, kind of, you know. So. Um, how may uh, how may my town, city, village spend the funding? I just want to go over this real quick with everyone. Uh, our part includes four broad criteria outlining eligibility uses. And I'm sure all of you guys read this, but just for public, I think I just want to put this out here. Uh, to respond to the public health emergency or its negative in economic impacts, including assistance to households, small business, and nonprofits, or aid to impact to, or, or aid to impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. So that is something um, that we can put this money towards. Uh, to uh, respond to workers performing essential work during the COVID-19 public health emergency by providing premium pay to eligible workers. Um, so that's um, the second. For the for the provision of government services to the extent of reduction in revenue due to COVID-19 public health emergency relative to revenues collected in the most recent full fiscal year prior to emergency. And so this is where we get it, to make necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. So um, those are the four categories. Um, 
when we get down to number four, necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. So um, what Chuck has been talking about is here, that will, that's something that, that fits under um, the, this bill. Um, water, um, as we're doing or finishing up this, um, this project here, uh, in the basin here that we've been working on. Um, the copay on that, or if there's any uh, town outlay on that, that would be covered with those funds as well. Um, and we don't have any public sewer, so there's really no, no expenditure there to look at. Um, to date, I don't have Sasha, do you have the exact amount we, ha amount we have? But it's roughly four hundred and seventy thousand dollars, I believe. I can, we have that, but uh, so the question is, do we want to um, allocate some to to, uh, to broadband? I, I, I think it's a good idea. Uh, we did have the the uh, MOU was looked at. Uh, by a, an attorney, not the attorney that had been looking at uh, the other towns, but this other one, and, and he didn't have a problem with it, thought it was fine. Um, however, we have received um, something from BLCT urging us not to sign or make any commitments at this point until further instruction comes out. There's still strings attached to this money that we don't know who's pulling those strings and, and, and how they're being pulled. Sure. Um, so at this point, Chuck, I don't, I, and, you know, there's a whole board here, but I'm not comfortable saying, all right, we can give you this much or this much. Uh, I think uh, there's money for broadband in here. Um, we need to figure out the best way, I think, to, to get it. We have a couple other projects, um, and I, I think I wouldn't mind getting together with maybe even you and Waitsfield to find out what type of partnerships even the, that we can help facilitate because they've since been such a good partner on this side of town for us sure. um, to see what would work there. And also I kind of want to hear from everyone else. As Chuck says, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things and there's a lot of money in broadband right now, as you mentioned. So if uh, there's other people paying for it, quite frankly, I, I don't want to put the same dollars where someone else is putting it. Sure. Uh, or potentially could put it. Um, I don't know, what's everyone else thinking? Well, what, what kind of timeline do you want in terms of getting funding from the town as far as, you know, as we see about the American Recovery Funds or, you know, get to town meeting and maybe have something also that the folks in town would vote on or I, I don't know what the different but what, what's your timeline for meeting funding? So we are starting construction uh, this winter um, on our Moortown pilot. We, if we are able to get our hands on the necessary materials, and admittedly there are material shortages galore right now, um, we could have service as early as next summer on our Moortown pilot. Uh, and the Moortown pilot runs along the Common Road and um, up, up towards Moortown Mount Road. And uh, so the question is not whether that project will go forward or not, that project is going forward. The question is how much debt we will have to take on in order to deliver that project. And, and any funds we can get that don't have debt servicing attached mean directly translatable reduction in service costs to our customers. So, I know this is, I may be I'm not that educated on all this. So, if someone lives their driveway a quarter mile up the road from the you know, mountain road or whatever. Yep. Did they they have to pay that to their house? Is that I mean, we will cover individual house pay that part of it? We will cover a portion of it, uh, and we have planned to cover a portion of it. But people who do have quite long uh, runs, and admittedly in that boat, uh, are likely going to have to pay some amount of money to to get access. Yes. Um, whether these funds could be used to offset that for more town residents directly, I, I don't know. That could be an interesting idea to explore. 
Yeah, I mean, only thinking that, you know, someone might pay something at, vote on something at town meeting, or, you know, as part of the budget, which is part of their taxes, basically, and so then they get the service to the pole, but now they're half a mile up their driveway, and so they have to pay some of that as well. But, yeah. Well, I guess you know, that's just the way it is. I mean, I'm not commenting good or nope. bad. Yep, that's, it, that's, it, that's is abs it is absolutely. It is what it is. Yep. That's, that's absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's just like if anyone's putting in a house and you have 500 feet of service, you, you know, pay unfortunately, you pay for it yourself. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. so you, you, there's... And this is just a new thing, you know, this came along, now there's, you know, right. internet. If right. you want internet, this is what, yeah. Studies have shown that uh, this investment does raise property values very directly. So, oh, you know, for people who can, this is definitely an investment worth making in their in their property. Right. Um, but I also understand that not everybody is going to be in the position to be able to do so. so yeah, right. Um, you know, we, we are definitely going to be looking at ways we can help offset that. Um, we are also making sure that as we explore pricing tiers for our service, we do have uh, pricing availability uh, for low-income members of our communities. Mm -hmm. And that, well, there may even be provisions in here, I mean, again, I think we should keep on exploring this, but where we might be able to allocate to those um, people with, you know, that, that can't afford to be hooked up um, through this, because again, that might be meeting a need of the individual this way. So we'll kind of back end it this way to get them hooked up to you. Yeah, per particularly if they were directly impacted by the COVID emergency, um, seems uh, like. hasn't. <laughs> but but I, I would, Caution you to explore it further, you know, with an attorney or, or oh, something, absolutely. you know, yeah. before before going down a path like that. While uh, attorneys are quite confident that um, turning over a certain amount of funds directly to us in a way that we can invest in the network is going to be an allowed use. Um, of course, the you know BLCT is urging uh, uh, taking it slow. Um, I don't know if that use would be as easily justified. <coughs> Right, well maybe, I, I think again, maybe not even in that one, but as I read through those criteria, there's criteria to fit that in, the people who have been affected by, yes. negatively infected, maybe the, uh, you know, if they didn't have internet because everyone was unemployed, you know, they needed to um, qualify or, or get online to do that, and if they couldn't, so I, I don't think that would be an issue to justify if we, if we wanted to do that at, at some point, but, then again, is it fair for everyone? So we need to look at a lot of those things. Sure. Um, so Chuck, probably not the answer you were looking for tonight as far as, um, but it's certainly not anywhere close to a no or anything like that. Yeah. We just want to make sure we're doing their due diligence, making sure that- I appreciate that. Um, and again, I, I personally, I can see that uh, uh, internet uh, broadband is, is something we need to invest in one way or another, you know, in this town. It is, I mean, that's the way of the world right now. Uh, and it's only gonna get stronger as people are working from home. Um, so we just wanna make sure we're doing it the, the right way though. Which, and I'm not saying yours isn't the right way, I just wanna be sure everyone's on board and uh, things are the way it should be. I appreciate that. Uh, I would ask, uh, what do you see as next steps to continue the conversation? I think that's kind of on our, we need to figure out, uh, see, we don't know what we don't know. And that's, uh, you know, probably, you know, we, so I think we need to all take a little bit of time and maybe talk to some other towns and find out what other people are doing. And, uh, you know, I just want to know why. I, I don't know all the questions I should be asking you. And, uh, or other people, so I'm going to I'm going to try to do more um, legwork just to you know make sure, and I'm really trying to make sure that I'm not duplicating others' efforts with our money, mm -hmm. or that I'm sending it to you know Washington Electric that you know has other ways of revenue and, and such, um, you know. So I want to make sure that. We're, we're maximizing the dollars for the people in town. That's 
That's all I'm trying to and that's what figure you should, out. That's what you should be doing. So I, I, as a Moortown resident, I appreciate that. Yeah, and, uh, and I think you have a great proposal, and I'm glad you're working on it because it gives it a lot of credibility in my mind uh, for you to come in here and talk to me. Okay. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, so it's. Um, I think we have a good relationship, and I want to continue that. You know, and we'll, you know, if you have more information, we'll share it with us. And as we have more, we'll share it with you. But don't forget, be afraid to poke us every once a month and say, hey, is there anything going on, or do you need something, or where are you going with this? Okay. Um, sometimes as a board, we get, just because we're volunteers and we're getting busy, we, we get things get lost with us. This oh, is not something I, that I really. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I don't think any of us have really forgot this money, and Sherilyn doesn't let us forget it either, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, something we're kind of moving a little slow on. I think it's probably the best. Okay, so I'll connect with Sasha and figure out yep. when, when we can next yep. continue the conversation. And if you have questions, um, in the meantime, certainly reach out to Sasha or any of us individually, or and I urge the board as well if they have questions to, you know, pass them through to Chuck and let us know when you find out if you have something going on. Yep. Um, and for what it's worth, uh, we have recently switched our emails to have official CB Fiber emails now, um, so you can email Moretown at cbfiber.net and you'll get the Moretown delegation, which of course Karen and myself. Um, so, you know, anytime you want to shoot an email to us, you can just email Moretown at cbfiber.net. Moretown at cbfiber.net. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Well, I, 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 I think I had one more question. Yeah. I, I, I have one. Actually, one more. Yeah. So, uh, again, going back to your, your report you gave us earlier, you had a price tag of $2 million for Moretown service. Correct. And so, you were not... I don't believe we're going to get two million dollars in return act money, right? Right. So, where will the rest of the money come from if you, if you cannot use community tax dollars? Where does the where do you get your rest of your money? The so, Tax Recovery Act and, and what you need. Where sure. Does it come from? Sure. So, um, first of all, let me start by saying uh, we are twenty one communities. We say communities because Barry City is one of our communities. Communities. So if we avoid towns, uh, Montpelier is also one of our communities. Um, and uh, among those 21 communities, every community is in a, a fairly different state of need at this point in time. So our build plan prioritizes, again, the underserved, as you've heard me say multiple times at this point in time. Prior to Waterbury joining the district, we had estimated the entire build of the project to be approximately $50 million. So that is actually the amount of funds we are considering. Of course, two million is the estimated Moortown portion of that. We Waterbury on board, back of the envelope, you know, gut gut take, we're probably looking at closer to sixty million dollars for the, the entire bill. And of course you get up in the Waterbury Center and there's some sprawling portions to, to cover. Um, so all of that being said, we have put together a plan that is largely based on loans that we can get. And the way it works is uh, there's a, a, a set of loans that we can get from the state that are high interest loans to accommodate the fact that you know we're a fairly high risk endeavor at this point in time. We have no revenues to, to point to to prove we, we've been successfully operating for some time. The idea would be to take those high interest loans, build out the network, show three to four years of revenues, then turn around and get municipal revenue bonds at much lower interest rates. Um, and so that's the model EC Fiber followed successfully to build out their network um, down in the White River Valley. And uh, it, it worked. Now, the problem, though, is that in doing that, a large portion of their subscribers' fees go to cover debt servicing. So. What we see as the opportunity with something like ARPA is not enabling this. We were going to attempt to do this, regardless of that money coming or not. What it does do is it allows us to offset that debt servicing on a regular basis to lower our customers' fees directly. Okay. 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 So you have the long ball. I mean, down the road, when you were saying you could potentially see even down in this part of Moortown, people could subscribe to CB Fiber if they wanted to. That, if they would have the option of not using Wakefield Telecom, they might use CB Fiber or the way they use Comcast or something. There's a lot that remains to be seen in how the CUD concept 
ends up forming. We only have one example to work from at this point in time, which is VC Fiber. Um, and they invented the model. And they did end up providing service in areas that already had options. So for example, uh, in uh, the village of Bethel, going through Bethel, they, they had cable, but now they also have access to CD fiber. Um, and so the intent of the communications union district model was to help the underserved. But our charge is to provide service to everyone in our community. So, so, so we're at this weird, there, there's this constant tension in what we try to do where we really just want to get the underserved people help. And particularly in a town like Moortown where we do have a great provider in part of the town, um, it's not really in our interest or desire to want to go compete with them directly, although I do think, generally speaking, competition is a, is a good thing in these kinds of services. Um, but, you know, we that's feel- down the road. Yeah, that's down the road. I mean, we're probably talking best case scenario four to five years, if not longer. Yeah, and, you know, similarly, Montpelier, Berry City, you know, they're gonna be at the tail end. A lot of Waterbury gonna be at the tail end, whereas uh, towns like Orange, Plainfield, Marshfield, you know, they're, they're in more towns portion. It's just that don't have service. Yeah. That's the most important part. Mid Middlesex and Worcester are really bad right. off, with the exception of one small portion of Route 2. So. Very good. All right. Any other yeah. questions for Chuck? Feel free to. No, thank you. That, I was just. Feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call if you uh, have any other questions, and I'd be happy to, to answer them. Thank you. Good. Thank, thank you, you Chuck. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Good Ray, how are you tonight? Good. Good. Thank you for making it. Yep. All right, so we are. Um, before Chuck, we had uh, Emily Wood, and we had some errors of emissions here. Yeah, actually, I was able to listen to the meeting in my truck oh. on the way over. But I couldn't, I couldn't talk. I don't know why, but uh, well, because I didn't allow you to. <laughs> uh, but I did. I heard everything that was uh, was talked about prior to me coming oh, to the door. Good. I'm glad that. So, um, so uh, we're going to continue on with reports, communications. John, why don't you uh, share with us? Sure, okay. Uh, I did attend the um, annual meeting of VLCT. It was a little different this year, the format. Um, in years past, uh, they had, they went over um, basically the, everything that they were gonna present to the legislature, um, which had to do with highways and quality of life and so on. Um, so it had a different format, so this year, they had the business meeting, um, and there really wasn't much to approve uh, there. And then um, they uh, are having now, uh, one today through Friday, they're having different sessions on different topics. And I believe Sherilyn, is that, that one today? Yeah, uh, Sherilyn uh, attended today's uh, session. And so this is both on Zoom and in person. So. Um, so that made it different too. So, but uh, uh, other than that, there really wasn't much to, to report. And that's all I have. That's it, John. <clears throat> what do you mean, Ray? How about yourself? You have anything going on? Uh, I did uh, set up a meeting with uh, the lady over. Um, Susan Smith. Yes, all and right. that's uh, I think that's the fourteenth next week sometime. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to Martin about it and. Make sure he's on board to go to that meeting as well to see what's going on. Um, I did talk to Joe Gabbery regarding the war memorial. And basically, <clears throat> we're going to move it. It's not going to be the exact same location because if we want to put it in the same location, we'd have to hire the guy to come back twice. Yeah. So I, I thought it'd be okay to move it far enough, you know, that he can just dig one hole pick up the monument and set it in the loophole yeah. without having to you know, add an additional cost to, to the whole thing. Um, and I did talk to Martin again about the trailer endorsement. I talked to him today about that. Uh, hopefully he's going to make it a priority to get it done this, uh, this year, right. this fall. Uh, cool. Anything else? Sir? That's it. 
принципе. Да? Right. 
Uh, but people, you know, we'll put that in the envelope. So when, when I finish selling them, you know, at some point, and I have this money from the extra hats and all, and Deerfield Design was great. They, they were really reasonable and, and made a bit of a donation, too, just by Thanks. reducing the price. So now, then I'm going to have a bunch of cash. So how? Who Get it to Sherilyn. To? Sherilyn. And then she'll put it. She'll put it in the fund. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think there's a more fest fund, or if not, we'll make sure there is one so it goes yeah, there. Okay. So it's yeah. Something that's gone. Thank you, John. Okay. John, would you hold one for me, please? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Price is going up now. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Get them by the Christmas rush here or something. Right. Right. All right, Ms. Yeah. Kelly, what did you have for us? Um, so I was able to connect with Danny Hale, who's one of the heads of BASA. And basically the information that I got from him was the change in the ATV ordinance did not change anything at all. So if ATVs were allowed on Class 4 roads, they are still allowed on Class 4 roads by the town. The town has always had that ability to make that change. So if they were allowed, that didn't change anything, it just changed some wording. Right. And he was actually the perfect person to talk to because he was the person who changed the wording. So um, we talked a little bit more about ATV use and he knew exactly, in essence, the main place that I was talking about. Um, and his response was if we wanted to do an ordinance or anything, he would be happy to help. Um, but um, he said the people who are riding in these areas are locals. He's like, you're not going to get people coming in from Vasa to ride on a six mile loop. He said it's, it's not going to happen. He goes, they're primarily locals. They've been your locals. He was actually part of the group a while ago when they had come in to put trails in. So he has kind of been through the course of it all. And he said, in essence, that they're having trouble with their own enforcement with how it is. Yeah. So they're not getting anywhere with their stuff either. So. That's kind of where he was. He was willing to help, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't think it would be much help, but right. Right. But in essence, that wording didn't change anything for yeah. what the town may or may not have had in place to begin with. So it just tweaks some wording for the legislature for something that was written poorly to begin with. And his response was, your locals are going to be there, in essence, kind of no matter what you Regardless, do. Regardless, right. You're yeah. going to have your locals. He said people aren't coming in, and there aren't any trails in the area to connect to make it more appealing. So what I'm thinking about when they were talking about having, you know, loops on these apps is it's probably like Map My Run with Under Armour or the hiking things where if people do a loop and they GPS point it, it then automatically uploads. So if I was running and I ran, a, I ran the same loop, someone who was new coming into the area who didn't know, like let's say I traveled to Boston, I could go into my app and say, oh, you know, where are the most commonly used places? So that's probably where it pops up but they didn't have any interest in expanding anything this way, in essence, really wanting to touch anything over this way. So that is what I got from him. So we might be better off, you know, as, as we get more information here, rather than, you know, opening up things. Uh, God bless you. Um, is really just trying to enforce something on those roads that we have now or keeping the, the P, I don't know. I, I don't see where now we've got more of this is no one really wants to engage with us to help with right. the management of anything and they've 
quite frankly say it doesn't really work. Um, I, I do a fair amount of travel in New Hampshire, and when I go northern New Hampshire, uh, there's a couple, there's some towns, and it's, you gotta be fairly careful of the way you're driving because there's a lot of four wheelers that are using the roads, and that's what they're allowed up there, mm -hmm. so. But they're all registered. No, right. Yeah. That's, that's a problem that we have right now is, you know, I'm registered and 80% of the people are registered, but there's that 20% that's not registered. That well, they just fly all over the place. They just go all over the place. And, and, and I heard you talking about what happened this weekend. I mean, they probably, none of them were registered. Right. Um, so, so there's no oh, way. It's like a lot more than just registration. You've got to be properly insured. Right. I mean, that's just the beginning. give you the okay to ever travel that road unless you're properly insured. Right. There's a lot that they're not complying by. So I, I yeah, it's, it's, we've got to figure out to try to maybe keep the, the loop closed rather than open it up to right. more well, potential. Your problem on that loop is not your ATVs. Your problem on the loop is vehicles, which are fully allowed to be up there. And then they go off road with the trucks and things like that. Yeah, I mean, we, in essence, set up a game camera that automatically watches Lynch Hill and our upper field because we've had more than one vehicle blow donuts in our upper field or we've had friends go head up the hill and have seen people parked there and in essence blocked them in and said, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be up here. So we have a camera, so we know who goes up the hill and who comes right. down the hill. But it's more, it's not necessarily the ATVs. No. I haven't really seen anybody, <clears throat> but the trucks that go up there. And we've learned from past experience that posting signs and closing it doesn't work because we've done that and that's yep. the signs end up trashed and right. the chains end up knocked over. Um, we had uh, Lieutenant White in here, and you, you heard what their responses is. It's, it's lukewarm when they can, um, but they're, they're fairly out, so. Um, and that's why we got the camera, so we know who's up there. We get an automatic picture when they're up there. And, I mean, they're great pictures. You get license plates and everything, and that's how you, in essence, get Right, so Everybody. private, if you can get private landowners like yourself to continue doing that. Um, I think the other thing we might have with police, and Sasha, can you follow up with Lieutenant White? I know they were looking to send us a contract. Yeah. Um, I know we were looking for just budget time, but the sooner that we can start thinking about that and maybe incorporating that, and maybe those are the type of things that can, like patrols, I mean, that's what we're more apt to keep people out of there than I think anything. I mean, nothing else seems to work. Uh, I don't really know that much about this stuff, really. Um, but what was Steve McGill was when he was here uh, to one of the meetings before? He mentioned that there was something, something stopped everybody from being able to do the loop because there was a washout. Or there was a culvert that was washed out. And so then he was one. I mean, then he was asking, uh, could there be a gate there? Is that that's another question? You couldn't do. I mean, I've never been on the road, so I don't know. Yeah. Just, I, we would can't, have can't do it, and then just go around it anyway. Yeah, oh. and you have to go through a whole process to fully close that road. We right. would have to go through yeah. a whole oh, okay. separate yeah. process. Yeah. Well, <laughs> And, I mean, there's a lot of hunting camps on either side. There's one, there's someone who just purchased land. There's going to be potentially two houses up there. Oh. So, on, on the closer sides of each, it's getting pretty Is more Potentially. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, we're seeing more and more camps. Camp, yeah. yeah, we're seeing more and more camps yeah. become full-time residents, and that, that's an mm -hmm. issue. That's mm -hmm. a real issue. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've talked to the DRB about that. Yeah, and, and, and it's, st it's still happening. I, you know, hopefully, they're on top of it. Because, um, like, actually, who was it? Um, he used to be here on the board. He's with the. Um, Oh, Still Dave Van Dave, Dave, Remember, because there was an issue there, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think the, the DRB had put in his permit, if you decide to 
live here full time, then you're going to need to upgrade or those are the things we need to look about in this road is because if people are living on class four and then also they want services, um, you know, there needs to be, uh, all right, you guys need to have, uh, there needs to be a mechanism to pay for that uh, infrastructure. Yeah, I think the only one who's approved to be there all the time would be Wet Souls. Would be? Wet Souls. Clayton. Yeah, the one. Because well, they're well, like. The guy that bought, <coughs> bought Woody's Woody place uh, is here full time. Yeah, I don't think he's supposed to be. I'm trying to mute all these people. Did you just sell a piece of property up there at Rotary? There's so much. I I was partnered to some land up there quite a while ago in 2001. Yeah. I mean, most of them are in essence hunting camps. People aren't there, right. but starting soon they're going to be there. All right. So I guess um, no real good answers on how to, to take care of those roads. I think. The best thing is landowners like yourself uh, continue to put up game cameras and report. If you see someone, especially if you see someone going up the road with a trailer and trailing around a Jeep or something like that or anything, you need to, you know, let people know. Yeah, I kicked a couple people off this spring who Sean had told that they could be there and then I came out and said, oh, actually, no, you can't. You need to <laughs> yeah. leave. And I, and I do, you know, when I see people, I have talked to quite a few people, and a lot of people think that it's public land up there. You know, right. And I've told them it's, it's not public land. There's a right of way, and that's where you have to stay. And, yeah, I haven't had any really big arguments, but. Because yeah. um, I, I don't think that opening up the roads, it doesn't sound like opening up the roads, say if you, ATV use is any, because we don't, we don't have anyone to help enforce. I mean, that was the idea behind that, is if there was right. something, mm -hmm. we could have ordinances and then we could enforce it, but we, we, there's no way to enforce it. So, I think uh, we need to try to figure out another strategy maybe to, mm -hmm. to combat that. Thank you, Callie. Anything else? Um, mm. There's a van and I'm probably either going to call Martin or the state police about it that's been parked on a very sketchy corner on Jonesbrook Road for basically all summer, making that piece a one-lane road. So, and I know, um, I think Rodney was going to stop today and talk to them and tell them to move it when they brought the excavator down from doing the culvert work, but he didn't have a chance, so if I don't get a hold of more Is Martin, it, I'm going to stop. Well, yeah, don't actually just... Don't you stop and talk to him. Don't stop talk to Martin. Call the state police. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll call them then. Yeah. You don't want uh, to anyone in, in a situation that you don't know what's what it is. And if it's been there all summer, you know, just let They've them. been doing work there, and they have had their stuff in the road all summer. So there was a house there then, or something that mm -hmm. they're working on? They're, they're working on it. Yeah. It was an old school house in there. Or I thought it was just parked there in the, on a corner somewhere. No, well, no if, it's on. The if they want to stop and tell them to get the stuff out of the way, you know, you can certainly reach out to Martin. I thought it was just an abandoned vehicle type where they were parking no, there at night. No, they just left it there. I mean, their stuff's been in the road all summer. It's basically made a corner that, especially when it rains, can be slippery anyway. Yep. Much harder to navigate. Nope. You know, first let them know that we'd lay it out of the way. They may not know that it's been a pain in the butt. So um, they, probably <laughs> they probably should, but they, they may not realize it. And so if we can let them know, tell Martin to let them know, or Rodney will leave a thing or take the excavator and just push it out of the way. <laughs> 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 um, They've right. got a nice driveway now, so it can go in there. Okay. Uh, so nothing else with you, Callie? Nope. All right. <clears throat> Um, just a couple quick things with me. Uh, again, more fests. Uh, well done. I think everything went really well. There was, I don't know, uh, two, three hundred people or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was, um, everything seemed to have gone very smooth. Fireworks are awesome too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, we were really fortunate. They do a great job for yeah. us. We heard them. Oh, on the other side of the mountain. 
Yeah, we could. We heard them through yeah. through the trees. We couldn't. We could see like a light glow. You should have told them. And the fire department did a great job with their corn and uh, their famous French fries. Now, I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, and the beer was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawson's finest liquids. Are they all right, Larry? Uh, Ray? Yep. Good. Nice to hear. Um, I had a good cupcake there, too. The lady on the corner saw cupcakes. It was pretty good. Um, the only other thing I have is I had um, a, a letter. It's on my uh, phone. I'll forward it to you. A request to, um, to get on the rec committee. And it was from... Uh, uh, Lee and Martin, she's my wife, so um, I will pass that on all, but she had attended the meeting last week with uh, the rec committee, and um, so would like to be appointed to that. Okay. Oh, if everyone, if uh, everyone wants to make that motion. Sure, I'll make that motion. That we appoint Lee and Martin to be on the rec committee. All right. Second. All right, what kind of discussion do I have on this? <laughs> Nothing. I think she'll do a good job. She enjoys um, working with people and had a good time with the um, Morfest well, committee. Great job mm -hmm. with Morfest. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure it is. So, um, all in favor, vote aye. 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 So, does the rec committee still needs one more person, though, right? Yes. So we should still. Yeah. Reach oh, yeah. Out. Still be reaching out and yeah. looking for. Yeah, I, I know you said you thought you may have known someone. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone, you know, would we certainly uh, we need a total of seven in that. I don't know if that includes Steve getting done too, because remember Steve's stepping down and just yeah, I think he yeah. said it does, yeah. Um, so all the people there that help. So if it's all right, they wanted they were gonna use this meeting room and I, we said it was okay. I will just give Leanne my key so that we don't have to fool around with you guys. Um, so that it'll make it a little bit smoother if that works. All right, um, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, old business. Can you just back up just a second there? I, I, I missed the what you were talking about, Fletcher Road. Did we receive any bids? No, we didn't. Thank you, Ray, for bringing that up. So, uh, no bids were, were received. The, the feedback we had from Winter Set that there were, the bids weren't detailed enough. Uh, the only person I heard from was Bo and Cody, and I. And I thought I made it clear to bid on the documents as they're written, but I, I thought the documents were specific enough that they could have put a price on it with more detail. But uh, did Parent not bid on it? Parent's too busy to bid on it. Because we did put the uh, bid date, uh, our completion date of October, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, next year, so I thought we gave them. It's plenty of time, time. yeah. It, it, Ray, if you could take a look at that RP and um, I don't even maybe you want to reach out to those guys and find out kind of our right, where yeah we need to know, get what a is it that were uh, okay short so did they send <coughs> did uh, they send any letters <coughs> in uh, Sherman sent them reminders today when that said that and then parent construction. Didn't have time. Okay. She sent one to Will and Cody. <coughs> I hadn't communicated with her before, but no answer today. Maybe we'll have to delay a bid till the end of the construction season. You know. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. Who is this? Someone keeps on getting off with the phone, 905. Uh, yeah. No, I don't, he's, he's yeah. shown up as himself, but there's someone with a phone. Hello? Is anybody there or am I just the phone? Uh, David, uh, can you hear us? Technology problems. Well, not really. Are we muted? No. Mm -hmm. And he's no longer muted. Dave, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, we'll be with you in just a couple of minutes. We've got a couple things in front of you, Dave. If you can just hold steady for just a moment, please.
Okay, I, I thought there was no connection because I was on at 5 or 7 and it disconnected and I've been trying to connect ever since. Uh, well, we've seen you up on the screen, you've been, you've been here, so if you just hold still for just a minute and then we'll get right to you. How's that? Will do. Thank you. All right. Um, so we had old um, business while you were gone, and Ray's going to follow up on the uh, the Fletcher Road Bridge. Mm -hmm. Is there any other old business from below that uh, we need to chat about? Not below, but uh, I wanted to talk more about or in the, general. <coughs> the um, hearing. Go ahead. You know, from DRB. So it, it didn't go well the other night because we didn't have representation from anybody from uh, uh, Watershed Consulting. So um, we've set up, uh, there's another one set up for the 15th. Is that right, Sasha? The 21st of August. The 21st of October, 21st, okay. 21st of October. Now, just so everyone knows, John, this is the DRB you're talking about, right? Can Correct. In the project is? Yes. Yep. So the project is the um, the stormwater uh, system out out here with the the uh, two um, gravel ponds and so on um, to take care of um, any of the stormwater. And uh, so, it, it bottom line is there were a lot of questions, and uh, with the uh, the uh, materials that. Um, they had available to them. It just there. The, uh, the the map is really small, and even when uh, it was enlarged, uh, Paula uh, Woods had uh, enlarged on her, her computer, and, and it, it still didn't come out well. And some of the questions that came up. Uh, one, uh, Howland Brown attended, and he wondered about a uh, an easement across his property. And Ray, I don't think we, no, we didn't talk about that. No. And it sh sure looks like uh, the the uh, overflow is going to be going out, perhaps on their property. <clears throat> to that. Um, so I think. The, uh, to the. Um, to the drainage. I mean. To right. To to the the uh, over right. overflow area, and so from there it, it was going to tie into the the culvert down here that goes down to the, the new um, uh, catch basin by St. Patrick's. And we, to begin with, we had some difficulty with the property line there anyway for there, but uh, now we're extending uh, where the easement that we did get uh, from them um, is no longer in effect. So. We'll have to revisit that. Yeah, at some yeah. Point. So I think what we have to do it. We got. Uh, we Sherilyn said we have a, a large map here, right? That she said was Thanks. in color and everything. And, okay. So I think we need to sit down and really take a close look at that. Um, but as far as I know, um, the funding can still go forward. So the, the grant funding can still go forward. And, um, but it would be good if we could clear some of these issues up prior to the 21st. So you're going to work on that? Yeah, yeah, I'll work on that. That's good. Some, some of the other questions Ray had to do with um, um, when we talk about there won't be water, standing water within 48 hours or something of a heavy rain. And they wanted to know how deep the water would be because as one of the board members pointed out, you could have, um, you know, you can drown in an inch of water. So, and nowhere did they talk about, you know, that as well. So. Well, of, and uh, so you've been in contact with Watershed to yeah. get them involved right. to make sure. Yes. I've seen uh, emails from Pam DeAndrea yes. and getting things right. put together so that we can uh, put a professional presentation forward with those guys. Yeah. And, and, and that's unfortunate too, is that Pam DeAndrea is leaving. Um, so I don't even know who to be dealing with. But as far as I know, she's going to still 
you know, work, work on this until we got everything in. She's going to put in the uh, submit the grant and everything. So Good. we'll be all right there. <coughs> anything else on that? Uh, no, that was it. Is there any other old business we have um, to discuss? Ray, did you have anything? I do not. Anyone around the table? Don? Sean? Mm -hmm. All right. So instead of going to new business, because we're falling a little behind here, when we got David on the line, uh, David was here. David, can you hear me? Am I unmuted now? You are. Hello, can you hear me? We hear you just fine. Okay, good. Because my microphone on my computer isn't working for some reason, so I had to call in on the phone to be able to talk. Okay. That's your uh, 0591. Is that your number, David? That is correct. Okay. All right. So you were um, discussing class four roads and legal trails. What did you have for us? Yep. Uh, just if I could mention very quickly, uh, at the DRB meeting here the other day, Mr. Huggaboom did a very fine job of representing the town, but there's some technical issues that uh, that uh, are best served being represented by the, the engineers, but he did a fine job, and uh, I, I commend him on his efforts. Thank you, David. Okay. Oh, you're quite welcome. Everybody gets nervous at these hearings. Everybody. Okay, so... My conversation tonight is just informational, just pointing out what I've witnessed as activity in multiple towns in that development is happening in areas that historically was really not done in the towns on the class four roads and town trails. And different towns have different regulations about the zoning on for development on these. And the DRBs rely on the zoning to give them guidance for any conditions that they put for development on a class four road or a town trail. And I am just suggesting to the select board that this is an issue in multiple towns and planning commissions um, in different towns have been given different direction from different select boards. And I'm suggesting that you take a little think about this. Um, how do you want to handle development on class four class or town trails? The specific point of concern is public safety. Some of the class four roads are really, really narrow and two vehicles just cannot pass, even two cars. So somebody's got to back up. And more seriously is if there is an emergency of vehicle, uh, a fire truck, there's absolutely no way they can pass uh, on a lot of portions of town trails. Uh, some towns have requirements in their zoning that uh, there has to be a pull off every 300, 350 or 400 feet of typically 10 by 35 or 40 feet to allow emergency vehicles or any vehicles a pull off to pass. Um, so uh, I'm suggesting that you consider what your class four road policies are, what your zoning is and decide, is this an issue that you think you should address or take a look at? And if so, which is the appropriate board to give the recommendations for the statutes? It could be done as a class four road policy or it could be put into the zoning regulations. There's different towns do it different ways. I'm not suggesting one way is better than the other. I will point out that practically speaking, this could be a thorny issue in the future. If somebody puts development on a class four road and it's in the zoning and the DRB addresses it, they could say, you've got to put bypasses every 300 or 350 or 400 feet. And in some cases, that could be quite a bit of development. So whatever recommendations, whatever board comes up with, it's got to be done carefully with thought as to the impact for any future um, land development on these, these in these situations. So it's 
just a suggestion, just for information. That is which I, what I propose to uh, discuss with the board or present to the board. Thanks, uh, David. Do you have any? Um, it sounds like you've gone to other towns. And there's a lot of other things going on. Do you have a list of ideas or, or ordinances or? or no, I don't have any off the top of my head. I have seen them. Lots of times I look through zoning for comparison purposes. I could I could spend a little time and try to get some examples. Um, I would look through the zoning stuff rather than the town ordinances, and I could report back to either the select board or the planning commission, as you wish. No, I, I, tonight it came up a little earlier. We were uh, on the periphery of we were talking about uh, I think it was development on class four or such. And so it is something that we've um, discussed before and, I, and we do have a, um, some things in our ordinances I, you know, off the top of my head, I couldn't say what they are. Um, but if you wanna go ahead uh, and look into um, what other towns are doing and then report back to us, I think that would be a good idea. In the meantime, we can kind of circle the wagons here and figure out who needs to make, whether it's you or like you said, the planning commission to find out the um, best way to go to, and again, whether it comes through a class four road policy or, or zoning, um, you know, we'll need to figure that out. But I think it's, I think it's a good, uh, good thing to look at. I think it's, I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, yeah. This will be at least a month before I get back to you because I'm backlogged now. So it will be at least a month. Yeah, no, um, okay. that, that would be just fine. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. All right, well, well before you go, I had a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, something came up this week. Um, it was a permit that you had uh, issued to um, Dan Noyes. Was it Dan Noyes? Yes, and it should have gone to the DRB. Can you tell me about that? Yes, this is uh, quite an embarrassment. I did not act on that application within 30 days. The Moortown zoning says that any application that's not acted on within 30 days is approved, deemed approved. The state statutes which control zoning say the exact same thing. If you don't act on it within 30 days, it's approved. Now, by action, that means either approve it, deny it, or refer it to the DRB. I did not act on it in time. So when I looked at it, I said I missed it by two days. There's the statutes in the zoning and the state statutes. It was clear to me that I had to approve it. So I did approve it, and I put the conditions that the E91 address had to be obtained for the additional unit, and that he had to uh, post the zoning notice uh, in view of the public right of way, which is uh, Route 2 at that point. A adjoining neighbor um, saw the notice and has an issue and has submitted an appeal. The appeal was, uh, application was complete and the fee was submitted. So I um, scheduled this appeal for the DRB meeting, which is going to be the 21st. And in my discussions with VLCT, to ask some technical stuff about this issue. It turns out that there's not only statutes which control um, the zoning regulations, but there's also case law, cases that go to court and then a precedent is set by the court. So this is rather a complicated issue and it is all in the hands of the DRB at this point. Okay, how did you happen to miss a 30 day deadline? Uh, you want the details of my health issues? 
I will give him. You will wish that you never have anything happen to you like happened to me. It put me behind a couple of weeks, and the workload has been heavy. And okay, I David, I don't need, I don't need uh, details. But so you're saying you're out because you were not working? Is that it? It's. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get to it, Tom. I missed okay. it. It's my fault. I missed it. I'm not shucking that responsibility. I just say I screwed the pooch, and I couldn't have picked a worse application to do it on. What's that comment you just made? Uh, it's a colloquial cool comment that I use. So, so I made a mistake. I've apologized, and I'm leaving it at that. Have we ever um, missed a deadline like that before and issued a permit? Had to issue a permit or, or such? I am not aware of, of that happening in, in Moortown. In Waitsfield. Uh, no, I'm not talking about you. someone. I'm talking about you and us. No, I have not missed one. Did, did anything happen with um, the Newman property, Lucinda Newman, like that? Did we miss something and we ended up having to issue a permit there too? Uh, I correct myself. I'm sorry. I did miss that one. Okay. And that was that was negotiations back and forth and she she realized that there was a gap in communications of 30 days and she asserted her right to get a permit issued and I did. Okay. So I stand corrected uh, Tom it did happen once before. Okay. Thank you. Um any other questions for David? Anyone? I have one for Dave. What's can I ask that? Church, what's the Travis? Um, so we have a the, wait a second, just a minute. Uh, David, we have a uh, uh, someone from the public. I know you are Travis. <laughs> uh, Travis Blodgett here. He has a question for you. So I'm going to go ahead and let him ask you. Go ahead, Travis. David, what's our current uh, zoning regulations? Do we have a current zoning regulation? On oh, sir. Could you please move closer to the microphone? Yeah, yeah. I'm just hearing echoes. I cannot hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, David, do we have a current zoning regulation on um, access and footage requirements in our zoning bylaws? Do we have a... For building, for building on class four roads and legal trails? Uh, yes, we do for the class four roads. Any development on a class four road has to be approved by the DRB. How about substance? The way it is, is any, any development that's not on a class one, two, three road or public right of way has to be approved by the DRB. So there can be landlocked lots that are accessed through deeded right of ways, but the zoning administrator can't approve those. Those have to be done by the DRB. Is that accordance with Act 4412, Abbreviation 3? Uh, yeah. That's... All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yeah, I, uh, I have earnings on. Hey, Dave, uh, Ray has one more question for you. Dave, I, I talked to you earlier about the permit for uh, the work on the, uh, the restoring the schoolhouse on Jonesburg Road. Uh, initially, you told me. Um, they didn't need a permit, but now I understand that you've asked them to get a permit. And meanwhile, the work has continued up there. Uh, so where, where do you stand on that? Are they going to get a permit? Or are they not going to get a permit? Or what's going on with that? And who is this for my speaking to, sir? This is Ray Washburn. OK, Ray. Uh, when they initially uh, approached me about development on this building. They said that they were going to be doing external repairs and internal work, and there would be no changes in building dimensions. While they were doing the construction work, repairing the, the foundation, which does not require a permit, it's maintenance repairs, they ran into high ground waters. So they raised the building four or five feet. That was made, uh, I was made aware of this by a neighbor 
And I went and investigated, and lo and behold, the building was higher. So that constituted a change in the structure. It's no closer to the road, but it's now four feet higher. So that's a change in dimensions, and that requires a permit. And I advised the owner that they had to put in a permit. And I advised the owner that you have done the construction without the permit. And they paid the 100% penalty for doing construction without a permit. When I received the permit, it indicated that the setback from the building to the center of the road was 62 feet. The zoning regulations in that zoning district are it has to be 65 feet. So I advised the owner that, I'm sorry, I can't approve this permit. You are going to have to put in an application to the DRB and a conditional use application to get approval for doing this work, to get a waiver for this setback. That application was submitted. The fees were submitted. That is on the schedule for the hearing on the 21st. Okay, uh, I, I'm just surprised that uh, they've been able to continue uh, work there. I mean, uh, I'm not opposed to the project. I'm just surprised that, uh, that you know this project has been going on since May, and it hasn't stopped. And there's been no po no permit posted up there, and you know it's right on the main road up there. And it, you know, a lot of people are asking how, how they can do that. Uh, it, it just it just looks bad from the from the whole town. Yeah. And, and well, the they've got their permits. They permit. Um, it should be posted. Uh, what day did I do that? Well, you just said you couldn't. They had a, it, should yeah. be, it should be posted by now or tomorrow. Um, I told them I could not authorize continued work, and that any work they do would be at risk and could be ordered to be torn apart by the DRB. Now, again, my, my goal is to get people into compliance with the zoning. It's not to punish people. And having them submit the applications and get scheduled, I view is, is working diligently to get them into compliance. Very good. All right, David, thank you. Um, if there's no other questions for you, you're uh, free to leave or you're free to stay, however you'd like to do it. Thank you very much, sir. You have a good evening. You as well. Thank you. All right. So um, that is our zoning. So now we'll breathe in for a second and let's go back um, to new business. Everyone has new business for the board tonight. Anybody? Hi. Nothing. Sasha, what about yourself? We have anything new? Um, old stuff, we all, we're still good with the town garage and the lights and that stuff that's going on. Or the old, just the DocuSign, that's all we're doing, which John or you are going to DocuSign it. Well, you guys, arm wrestle actually tonight before we leave, we get arm wrestle for that privilege. Yeah. I mean, the only thing on the town hall is, um, you know, we also have that condensation uh, problem that we need to. to Sasha's to going to, um, I guess, look and see, one, look for the, uh, ask Cheryl in, see what's out there for any kind of rants to, to look at, but we need to do a scoping study or, or something, engineering study on the town hall. Or no, no, the town hall, town garage. No, no, I was talking about the town garage. I'm sorry, did I say town hall? Yes. Well, yes. also, so the lighting, and then we also have another okay. issue there, which Ray is working on trying to see right. the DF wall. We'll look at the like everybody see. else. It's it's just a bad time of year to try to even talk to anybody about right. anymore. 
As long as it's on everyone's radar. Yeah, yeah it is on the radar for sure. People are, are yeah, I'm not sure we're just going to use the grant for the lighting. And then we'll have to see what we can get next year. Or okay. maybe we'll get some pricing for it. We can include it this town meeting. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, 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 that's all right. That's all right. But we're still going to we get that. All right. So if there's nothing else, I do have something um, I'd like to go into an executive session with. Um, so I'd like to um, go in with it, make a motion to go into uh, executive session. And I'm doing it on uh, number four. And this is uh, um, stating it's a uh, disciplinary or dismissal action against a public officer or employee, but nothing in this subsection should be um, construed to appear the right of such officer or employee to a public hearing if formal charges are brought. So, and it would be just the board. So, Sasha, you can head out for tonight. Travis, have a nice night. And Orca, thank you for coming. So, um, need a second on that? I need a second on that. Uh, I, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. All right, John, second. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. Kelly is staying. She's in the bathroom. So.